Greetings. This is Come to the Fountain TV program. I'm Apostle Julie Hardigan. Coming up is Come to the Fountain Leadership and Healing Conference. I'm Apostle Julie Hardigan and I'm interviewing uh, Reverend Rosina Fuller about evangelism and discipleship. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I am blessed. I enjoyed prayer this morning. I enjoyed uh, the conference yesterday, and I'm glad to be back today. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. You know, I heard a message, uh, uh, was it within the last month, from uh, Reverend Rosina, and she talked about evangelism and what God had given her for the moment. When you have a word from the Lord, um, you need to get it out. Mm -hmm. And which one of the things she impressed upon at the meeting that I heard her speaking at was that she did not want to go to home to heaven before her obedience to get that message out. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really appreciated the message. And we're going to be talking. It was about evangelism, and and uh, it's it's really important to to be yourself and to make to. Uh, it might not be our family members that we can reach out to, but it might be somebody in our sphere of influence because she reaches a whole sphere of influence differently than I do. And everybody here reaches di totally different people. I can't reach the people that you can reach, mm -hmm. and you can't probably reach the people that I can reach in, in a different city at the same time. So it's how important that the message is out about evangelism and um, the, it's all of our jobs. And I think you, you talked about that um, at Pastor Hattie's church exactly. when you spoke there. Exactly. Well, um, I do want to say, um, and I, I try to do this everywhere I go, I want to bring greetings. First of all, I want to thank God for being here. I want to thank you for inviting me. I want to thank everyone who's listening and who's hearing and who's seeing what God is saying to the churches. And I do bring you greetings from Good News Baptist Church in uh, Minneapolis and my pastor, my senior pastor is Alvin Killian, and I'm an executive pastor there, and I'm glad to be here. And the um, conversation and the word that the Lord gave me that you're referring to, sheep begot sheep, um, is, is um, it is a watchword for evangelism. It is a watchword for discipleship. And um, one of the things that I mentioned before that you've reiterated is uh, Miles Monroe has a saying, and he says, die empty, die empty. In other words, any gifts, any callings, any words, any prayers, anything that God has given you to do while you're here, you want to get it done. Die empty. Some people don't like that. They say, oh, that's a little creepy. But I get that, and I hope that you get it as well. Everything that you think God has called you to do, I say go for it. If he's called you to sing, sing. If he's Amen. called you to dance, dance. If he's called you to do a conference, do that conference. If he's called you to do multimedia ministry, do that multimedia ministry. If he's called you to usher, if he's called you to go next door and bring your neighbors some groceries, if he's called you to make that phone call to that person that's gotten on your last nerve, I'm saying get it done. And I'm saying it's not something you have to do, it's something we get to do. So evangelism is something we get to do. Uh, discipleship is something we get to do. It's an opportunity to do what the Lord has called us, and dare I say what God has created us to do, which is to go and bear fruit, to reproduce. So when I say sheep begot sheep, and in that context that I talked with you, I talked about shepherds begotten shepherds. And I like that too. When when you talk about shepherds begot shepherds, or shepherd, shepherd, shepherds begot shepherds. She, shepherd. mm -hmm. I messed um, that up, but you 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 cleaned it up, so it's all good. Okay. Um, sometimes people procrastinate so long mm -hmm. and pray about things so long and go into <laughs> all these meetings for so long to find out what to do um, that somebody with a great gift could have already had it done. And sometimes it helps people to learn the process, but sometimes it's just easier to not procrastinate and just do what you're called to do. <laughs> um, and when, when, um, 
when you process something like a conference, uh, God has given one person the vision, and I heard a pastor, I'm not sure where the origin came from, but the saying, uh, I heard it from a, a pastor speaking last summer about um, the vision, that God doesn't give the vision to two people, uh, but he gives it to one. If he gave it to two, it would be die vision. Um, and I, I see that in the sense of somebody leading, a good leader um, will, will know the vision and not depart from it and has to stay focused on what the vision is, even though all these other pe ideas come in. The ideas come in, and then you can say, oh yeah, I see that working as a leader, and then make the team a part of it. But a lot of the planning committees and a lot, a lot of the team meetings that I see um, can change the focus on, on a vision. So if God has given you something to do, get it done as soon as you can. Um, and you may, don't procrastinate because you think you have six months to do it. You get it done and then refresh yourself later because if you have it done, by the time you get to that point, you know, you're gonna always say, oh, I'm so thankful I had that done and all I had to do was brush up. I think the key is obedience. Because I'm not saying rush before God, because that can happen on occasion. You know, God gives us this great vision, and we're out telling everyone about it, and before you know it, um, you know, things are, are a little crazy. So I am still talking about doing it in God's timing, but I'm also talking about keen, being keenly aware of who we are and our own personality, and being keenly aware of the stories we tell ourselves, the reasons why we can't go forward and do what God has called us to do, um, so I'm talking about being honest and being in the presence of God. I'm definitely talking about starting everything with prayer and direction from the Holy Spirit. So, uh, but I know that uh, in my life at least, I'm not gonna talk about you, but in my life, God will give me something to do and it becomes a bucket list. It's, it's, you know, I have 20 things that the Lord told me to do. And when I look back at that list, there are things that I could have already done. And I've also had that experience that you just mentioned, where God gives you a vision, God tells you to do this thing, you pack it up, you put it in a suitcase, and you put it in the, in the uh, basement, and uh, about six months later, somebody else is doing this thing that God told you to do, or six years later. And there's nothing that convicts you more when you see this thing before you that God gave you, but either for, what, for whatever reason, whether it's fear, uh, whether it's procrastination, and I don't want to always uh, label it negative. Sometimes our lives get busy, right? And we have this thing happen and this thing happen and this thing happen. So for me, the key is obedience. I agree. Obedient, we're, we've kind of switched the topic by the <laughs> Holy Spirit. We've gone from evangelism and discipleship into visions, visionary, obedience, um, timeliness, all things that are really important to good leaders. Um, not procrastinating, the obedience to hear the Lord. I had heard a, a testimony once where a person was going to be let go from their job, and their supervisor is a Christian. And some of the team members were happy about that person being let go. But the, the supervisor had heard from the Lord that that person was in the wrong job and they needed to be shifted over to their giftings. And that person, the supervisor was still gonna let that person go. But, that, but God sent another messenger into that, into that person's meeting and said, you're not listening to the Lord. You're letting somebody go and, and this is the job that they're supposed to be in. So that, he, that supervisor shifted that person into the proper job and that person is still there today. Um, and it, it's that person's gifting. So supervisors need to hear the Lord's voice. Leaders need to hear the Lord's voice. A good leader will hear the Lord's voice and hesitate, and they might make a wrong decision out of disobedience. Not only do they hurt the person involved, it, it creates a conflict, but sometimes the people that want that person to be let go are humbled in, this, in the process where they think they're going to win a, an issue or something and that person's going to be let go and their problems are going to be done. I don't know exactly what that has to do with, 
but um, to have a supervisor make a, a decision out of obedience to what the Lord is telling them to do um, doesn't always take another party coming in to the situation saying you're not listening to what the Lord is telling you to do. So we've switched over to more of a leadership topic this morning. A good leader will uh, hear the Lord's voice. The word of God says, my sheep hear, hear my voice. Um, anything to expand on, Reverend? Well, I think that we're still on task because if you're talking about uh, evangelism and discipleship and you're talking about discipleship, you're definitely talking about leadership. Um, and I'm really excited about the scriptures that you've shared with me today. And we're going to be reading from John chapter 14, verse 5 through 7. John chapter 14, verse 5 through 7. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How know we the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye would have known my Father also. From henceforth ye know him and have seen him. I just read John chapter 14, verse 5 through 7. The second scripture that Apostle gave me was Matthew 28, 16 through 20. So if you're watching this, grab your Bibles. Matthew chapter 28, 16 through 20. And as Apostle is uh, getting that scripture, Jesus says, I am the way. We're talking about evangelism and discipleship. Jesus says, I am the way. And no one comes to the Father but by me. So let's go, go back to uh, evangelism for a minute here before we move on to discipleship and before Apostle reads our second scripture, which is Matthew 28, 16 uh, through 20. Um, when we're talking about evangelism, we're talking about, uh, for me, sharing the love of Jesus Christ with our brothers and sisters, no matter what they look like, no matter what their income is, no matter uh, where we find them, I can evangelize in the car. When I'm giving someone a ride, I can evangelize in the grocery store. I can evangelize on my job. I can evangelize at school. Um, I can evangelize when I have a birthday party for my daughter or for my son. The way that I live my life is an act of evangelism within itself. And simple things like saying prayer over a meal. I know every time we have a birthday, I learn this from my mother. Whenever we gather for someone's birthday or we have a birthday party for someone, we all gather around and we hold hands and we say a prayer. And before we say that prayer, we um, express our wishes for that individual, whether we want them to be happy, whether we want them to have joy. Uh, we express God's blessings upon them. And then we have a prayer. And we have a Christian prayer. Now, for some people, that's, oh, you're shoving your religion down people's throat. But my mother taught me to love people with the love of Jesus. And you know what? I found that no matter what the faith tradition of that person, no matter what the age of that person was, everybody was open to prayer. Everybody was open to the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord resting upon their life, the blessings of God being in their life. So when I talk about evangelism, I'm talking about sharing the love of Jesus, which is what you've done to me since I met you. When we talked on the phone, I remember you were sitting behind me at True Love Church and you tapped me on the shoulder and you gave me that brochure. That was an act of evangelism and that was an act of love. And what I love about that is you did not assume that even though I had been introduced as Pastor Fuller, even though I had given my testimony, you did not assume that I didn't need to come to this conference today. That's an act of evangelism. It's not always carrying a big cross and waving your Bible. It's about lifting up the love of Jesus with the truth that, as you understand it. 
And so I appreciate that, and I accept that as an act of evangelism. If you hadn't invited me here today, I wouldn't have been at prayer at 8 o'clock this morning, getting me some good stuff from the Lord, getting me some good stuff from the Holy Spirit. That's evangelism. Now, some people say, well, wait a minute, you're already saved. Do we need to evangelize the saved? I'm saying yes. You don't know where people are in their journey. You don't know if they've gotten off the path. I needed prayer today. I needed some deliverance today. I needed some joy today. I'm going to stop preaching. Take a breath. Do you have a testimony uh, of something in your life or something uh, how you came to the Lord or something about how you brought somebody else to the Lord um, that that's, would pop into your mind that you could talk about? Um, how I came to the Lord. Okay. I, what I'll share is uh, when I was four years old, we lived right down the street from a little church in Kansas City, Kansas. And my mother would get us dressed. Uh, and I would say that my mother was uh, the first person that did evangelism and discipleship in my life. And my mother would get us dressed on Sunday morning. That is an act. That's something, to get up and get your children dressed for, for church. It tells, it sends a message. Can I tell you I got something from that? What I understood from that is that Sunday morning was a sacred day. Sunday morning was a big day. It was an important day because when, when I got dressed to get up and uh, go play outside, you know, my hair was kind of this way and I had dust on my knees. But my mother would get us up on Sunday morning uh, and there were four of us. And uh, back in the day, they, they used uh, Crisco. She would put grease on our legs instead of lotion. And she would put my little uh, black patent leather shoes on and my little white socks and, and do my hair and comb my hair and sit me on the couch. Well, then after she got us dressed and fed us, then she would go upstairs and get dressed. I would give my mother a couple minutes and then I would leave and go to church by myself. I was about three years old. And the church was about a block down the street. And Miss Hattie stayed on the corner. And she would call my mama. She would say, Rose, that gal then gone down to, to the church again. So when you talk about meeting Jesus and uh, understanding my, my uh, spiritual um, encounter with the Lord, something was in me. When I was a young child, when I, my mother said I was three years old and two years old, and I would leave the house and leave her. And I would get a spanking for that. And do you know I would do it again? I wanted to get down to that church. And I remember that there was this big picture of Jesus at this church. And I remember going to Sunday school. And I remember hearing about the Lord. So when you talk about evangelism and discipleship, I know we have this formula that we want. What are the seven steps? But I want to tell you there are some practical things that we do in our lives that speak to our children. And there were some that also spoke to my, my neighbors. Because we lived in one of those neighborhoods where, you know, everybody was your mother. You know, you couldn't get away with anything. And uh, so when I was walking down that street with my little, you know, my little dress and my little patent leather shoes and my ponytails, people would call Rose. She, she's going down the street by herself again, and she's headed into that church. So I just wanted to say that um, those that things so count. They map. You know, I, the, the next story, which I'll try to make brief, is there was a young man that lived in my building. He was about 71, and uh, my son and I, I was a single parent at the time, my son and I lived on the third floor, and uh, his name was John Quincy Malumbi. He lived on the first floor. And he was about 71, and he was in a wheelchair, and he had oxygen, on, and he was all, you know, plugged up, and he had a nurse that came into his home. And uh, the Lord said, go down and visit John. I used to see him looking out the window. So I went down and I went to John's house. And when I got in his house, um, there were naked women laying on the, crowd, on the couch. And John was smoking like a, a chain smoker. He's passed away, God bless his soul. But um, when you talk about evangelism and discipleship, the Lord told me just go down there and sit. So imagine me, you know, I'm not so holy, I don't see a naked woman laying on the couch. Let's get that straight. But I'm looking, and then somebody comes out of the back room, they're smoking uh, reefer, and uh, I said, okay, Lord, well, I'm not sure what you got me into, but you told me to come down here. I'm going to come down here. To make a long story short, 
Just because I came down and I had my son with me, all of a sudden, the people smoking weed wasn't in his apartment anymore. And all of a sudden, and this is what you have to be careful of. Presence. The, the naked woman on the couch, he wasn't having any relations with her. These were friends of his that were crack addicts. And the safe place that they could come to and detox was his house. You get me? So, you know, um, obeying God uh, doesn't mean being blind, but how about you leave the judgment outside? Because you don't always know what's going on. And I learned from that situation that though there were places where people could come that was safe, you understand me? And he, he had uh, women laying out, and when they woke up, the Lord told me fix them breakfast. So I would fix them eggs and bacon and toast, and uh, I would clean John's place, and then I would take my son and go. After a while, I could come to John's place, and nobody was laying in there. But they said he was too square, and he didn't allow smoking because my son had asthma. So we're talking about evangelism and discipleship, and I've given you two very different examples. Uh, by the time that John passed away, he was off of the tubes. He could breathe well. He had stopped smoking. Uh, I had a birthday party for him, and my whole church came. We were all in a one-bedroom apartment. He had never had a birthday party in his wow. life. I'm talking about evangelism and discipleship. It's about loving people where they are. It's about, the Bible says, to watch and to pray, to pay attention and to pray. Just wanted to give you those two examples of evangelism. My mother just getting us up and getting us ready for church, and my obeying God, and God said, go down there to John's apartment and sit and serve and love. Amen. Those are my two examples. You want to share the second scripture? Okay. How was it? Mark Matthew. 20, oh, Ma Matthew. 28, 16 through 20. <clears throat> this is talking about the appearance of Jesus to the disciples. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee and to a mountain where Jesus has, had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And it goes into the Great Commission. Verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given un unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. What I like about that topic is it's not just evangelism, not just to bring them into um, an understanding of who Jesus is, but to the discipleship, the next step. You know, make sure they know the next steps is to be baptized, to get into a, a, a safe church, a church that reads word for word out of the Holy Bible, a holy church, uh, one that's preaching the gospel and love, the truth and love, even if it hurts uh, some si types of lifestyles, um, to be able to make sure they have a Bible in their hand. Uh, the Holy Spirit disciples, but it also takes people around and the obedience for people to get into Bible studies, uh, not to be complacent with their life. So evangelism, beyond talking to people about Jesus, making sure they're e being equipped mm -hmm. to be um, to be fed spiritually, We're, baby Christians sometimes never grow up, mm -hmm. and sometimes I, I I think about the scriptures that say people fall away. Mm -hmm. It goes into the once saved always saved is is not always the case. People fall away from Christ. There's scriptures about uh, many will fall away in the end times. That means they will not make it to heaven. And so people need to take that serious. The scriptures, I have another teaching just for um, working out their salvation with fear and trembling. You work every day um, and we're, we're accountable to God. You can choose whether you want to go to heaven or not by the way you live your lifestyle. Um, and discipleship, to keep somebody on the narrow road, keep them fed spiritually, keep them growing in the word of God. This is what feeds people. Whether they're a child and they need read pictures, as somebody told me recently um, that his daughter, after was um, he gave her two birthday cards, one about one Christian card and one non-Christian card, and she said to her her dad, 
can you get me another, um, I think she's an adult, but he's, she said, can you get me another youth Bible because I loved how it tells the picture stories. So he's bringing her back out of a lifestyle that wasn't necessarily a godly one. And she asked, just from the birthday card that he gave her witness to with the scripture, he a she asked for that Bible, that youth Bible again, that she could learn the stories from. So what people will grow up in, I didn't, I wasn't going to church in my, in my younger days, and I gave my life to the Lord at 18. Um, I, I had just a, my grandmother was a Baptist church member for 78 years, the same church, uh, First Baptist Church in Wheaton, Illinois, uh, before she went home to be with the Lord in 2003. She's the longest standing church member of that church. Um, and so I think some of that mantle passed, skipped a generation and got passed down to me because of whether it was disobedience or the calling. Mm -hmm. But I received it and um, not... <laughs> I'm not Baptist. I, I'm all denominations. I'm not a non-denominational. I'm Apostle Julie. I'm all denominations. Um, talking to all tongues and all tribes and all religions. I'm not just, I, not just one denomination that we talk to. Well, I also want to say a little something about Matthew 28, 16 in terms of evangelism. As I understand evangelism, that is going out and sharing the gospel or going in and sharing the gospel. And I just want to share that I really think that sharing the gospel in our home and living the gospel in our home is important. Sharing the gospel in our neighborhood and our community and living the gospel in our community in, is important. Sharing the gospel in uh, the nation and sharing the gospel globally. I think all of that is important. And I think when I think about evangelism, I want to make sure that we understand that we can participate in the areas God has called us to participate in. And if we have someone that is blind, and uh, they don't get to get out as, as often. You can participate in evangelism through phone calling or the people that you talk to. Um, you have someone who um, maybe doesn't speak well, but you can participate in giving. You can participate in prayer. So when I talk about evangelism, I'm talking about reaching out on behalf of Jesus Christ and being the love of God in the world. And my mother used to have a saying, bloom where you are planted. So wherever you are is an opportunity to love and to, to give and share the love of Jesus. Yeah, and the scripture Reverend Fuller, that you, talk, you talked about... Um uh, going to the nations. Let, I'll let you finish that in a second. When she talks about going to the nations, everybody thinks you have to go to another nation. God has the nations right here. This is our, our platform. If you, if you want to go to the nations, he's got people all around these Twin Cities communities to go to the nations and get to know the people, get to know the cultures, um, and uh, get a start there and then God will direct you even by the desire of your heart which nation to go to and I agree with that a thousand percent um, the other piece that I wanted to share about discipleship for me discipleship is, is um, nurturing and giving instructions and caring for and I like when you said that some baby Christians and the Bible talks about milk and meat and you talk about, and it can be heartbreaking when you, when you, um, uh, if you're in relationship with someone who has come to the Lord, and um, and they're not being nurtured, and they're not, um, they're not receiving the milk and the meat of the word, so that they can grow in the Lord. Um, so when when we talk about uh, discipleship, for me, because I had mentioned sheep begat sheep. And that was when you in invited me to come and to have this talk. And I talked about shepherds begotting shepherds. And I believe that shepherds are called to nurture leadership. I believe, first of all, all of us are called to disciple and all of us are called to evangelize. But a shepherd has a particular calling, whether you're a, a shepherd of a congregation or a shepherd of a ministry. And what do I mean by that? If you're the head of an organization or a ministry, there's a certain kind of uh, discipleship that God has called you to in terms of raising up 
even if you have a secretary, and you mentioned earlier, uh, God gives you a ministry and you have a secretary and you have a manager and you have a director of programs and you have someone in charge of social media. I believe that we're called when we're talking about discipleship and raising and identifying leadership. And, what I'm, and, and that's a little bit different than raising and identifying leaders. And what I mean is that our call is to help those that God has called into the ministry with us mature in the areas um, that God has called them in, if that makes any sense. So it's not really my agenda, it's still God's agenda. So what has God called you to do? What has God called you here to do? And then how can I help grow you uh, towards what God has called you to do? And when, we talk, when I talk about sheep beguiling sheep, um, I get a little concerned because there's this assumption sometimes in congregations that it is the pastor's job or it's the director's job to grow the organization, to grow the ministry, to grow the congregation. So when I'm talking about sheep begotten sheep and shepherds begotten shepherds, I'm talking about, um, even when we're talking about growing a church, when you're in a new church plant um, in particular, and you see that there's only you know 30 people there, it's not necessarily the pastor's job um, to, to grow the congregation. I believe that sheep begot sheep, and what I mean by that is I connect with that congregant. I pray for that congregant. Um, whichever way the Lord calls me to serve and be a sister uh, to that person, I should be doing that. And I'll tell you this, in a congregation, it's, it's a little, this is a pattern I've noticed. A brand new Christian comes into the congregation and the person that gravitates to them oftentimes is a person who's not mature themselves because there's a kind of newness. And so what happens is those two people stay at that current spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this person doesn't think that it's important to go to Bible study, then that person doesn't think it's important to go to Bible study. If this person doesn't think it's important to go to prayer, then that person thinks it's not important to go to prayer. So when I say sheep begat sheep, I'm saying that we should all be in the will of God um, under the leadership that God has given us. And um, it's important to note that when you are in a congregation, it's voluntary. You can come to church or not come to church. You can go to Bible study or not go to Bible study, but you submit yourself to leadership. When you come to a church and you feel like God's brought you to that church, you make a decision that if this pastor is telling me, and I'm not talking about without the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, but you make a decision that if this pastor has suggested that new membership class would be good for me, that it would be good for my spiritual health for me to go to Bible study, it would be good for me to come to prayer, then you make a decision to say yes to that. But we need to know that that decision impacts the person sitting next to me. Even as a parent, that decision impacts my children. And my children, are, and they're adults now, but they can tell you they lived in church because they had no choice. If I got ready to go, uh, if I got ready to go to Bible study, my children were with me. If I got ready to I'd go like to, to prayer. I'd like to expand on that a little bit. Go for bit. it. We're, um, it's not only the pastor that hears God's voice. The discipleship, um, the sheep, God's word says, my sheep hear my voice. Yes. And um, they, as people grow or they're watching this, there's some people that are going to really need, need this part too. Right. Um, hearing God's voice. If you read the Bible, then God starts to speak to you. And I'll give you a, a testimony. Uh, the woman was stranded on side the road one, one day, and I said, God, should I stop and help her? And I decided to get off the off ramp and go back and around to help. And I and as I did that, I heard, "Love thy neighbor." That was God answering me through the scriptures. That was the thought that came into my mind. He wants us to know His word because He wants to speak to each one of us. It's not just a pastor's job to evangelize, exactly. it, but the the congregation has to grow in the Lord. And if you're always hearing a a, a nice message, an uplifting, encouraging message, and you go home and you go for the week. By by Wednesday, you might be bankrupt with your your spiritual energy if you don't read the Bible every day. Um, it, the, we have one more scripture to touch on, and that was um, Psalm 2.8. You want to read that one? Ask of me, and I will give thee the nations for thine inheritance. 
and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Would you um, take the time and speak into the camera? Uh, it's probably this camera okay. there. Um, and when, when we're looking at that scripture, it's talking about, um, ask of me and I shall give thee heathen for thine inheritance. Um, would you pray for people watching from, the, from television, um, if there's anybody that's not a Christian yet, okay. to, to give their life to the Lord, um, and pause in between and let them uh, pray, pray the prayer along with you from, okay. from the t okay. television? Well, first of all, I just uh, want to take a moment and thank you for taking the time to be with us. We want to make sure that you know that we love you and that God loves you. Uh, we invite you at this time to just take a moment. We invite you to experience the love of God. We want you to know that you were created to worship the Lord. You were created to do abundant things in the name of Jesus. You were created to live a life full of glory, full of peace, and full of joy. And so we invite you now with this prayer, and please take a moment and repeat after me. Lord God, I look up to you. Lord God, I recognize that without you, I can do nothing. God, I ask that you would come into my heart, come into my life. Jesus, save me. Holy Spirit, indwell me. I give my life to you. I ask that you would forgive me for my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my life today, God. Dwell with me. And I will forever give you glory. I will forever give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here, and thank you for uh, watching uh, on television today. This is Come to the Fountain TV. Um, you can reach us if you have any questions or need a Bible. Give us a call at 763 544-7700 or our website is um, www.cometothefountain.tv or you can email us at comments at um, cometothefountain.tv Thank you uh, Reverend uh, Rosina Fuller for being with us today. I'm sure that this work will be on the earth for a while and, and we can have something else in place for, for the kingdom work. Um, thank, I enjoyed this time. I enjoyed this topic. It's uh, really important for people to know that they can be themselves and talk to people about Jesus uh, and be comfortable in the Holy Spirit doing it. Uh, and thank you for that. Thank you very much for having me.
Spirit says the Lord, not by might, no power by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, no power by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, no power by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not by might, not by might. No about power, no about power, yeah. Not my might, not my might, no, no. No about power, no about power, yeah. Not my might, no power by my spirit, said the Lord. Not my might, no power by my spirit, said the Lord. Not my might, no power by my spirit, said the Lord. Not my might. No problem by my spirit, said the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, yeah. Speak to the mountain in your life, and it will be removed. Yeah, oh, yeah. Submit yourself to the word and resist, and your enemy will flee. Grace, grace, yeah, oh, grace, grace, oh, we declare your grace, God, dead yeah, grace, grace, oh, yeah, grace, grace, oh, by your spirit, Lord, by your spirit, yeah, by your spirit, oh, by your spirit, yeah, by your spirit, oh, by your spirit, yeah. By your spirit, by your spirit, by your spirit. Woo. Ha. Lord, we need your grace. Lord, we need your grace. Lord, we need your grace. So we seek, so we seek your face. So we seek your face. So we seek your face. Till we find, till we find our place. Till we find our place, till we find our place. Lord, we seek, Lord, we seek your face. Lord, we seek your face. Lord, we seek your face. By your spirit, yeah. By your spirit, yeah. By your spirit. By your spirit, Lord. By your spirit. By your spirit, yeah. By your spirit, Lord. By your spirit, yeah, 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 da 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 da. Oh God, not by my nor by power, but by your spirit. All by your spirit, Lord. All by your spirit, God. We do what we do, Lord. We want you to guide us, direct us, Lord. Take control of us. 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 Yeah. Oh Lord, oh God. We need you. 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 We need you, Lord. By your spirit. By your spirit, yeah, by your spirit, by your spirit, yeah, by your spirit, by your spirit, yeah, by your spirit, by your spirit, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, glory to God. Come on, let's lift up our hands to God and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rabba Shakaya. Thank you, Lord. We bless you right now. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. 
not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Lord, we release your presence in this place. Lord, we claim this region, Lord, this territory. Lord, it is yours. We declare it. Let there be light, God. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory and honor. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you right now. How many ready to break out a little bit with me? How many ready to bust out a little bit with me? see my way I, I didn't know if it was night or day confusion was all around me yeah, yeah. Woo. but I decided I would not be bouncing bust it out come on sit bust it out yeah bust it out uh, by the power of God sit bust it out yeah sit bust it out yeah Bust it out, I will not be bound. Woo! He broke the chains, none can hold me. Depression, pride, lust, and fear. Woo! I got joy that's unspeakable. An unthinkable peace in my head. Oh, yeah, bust it out. Yes, it bust it out, yeah. Bust it out uh, by the power of God. Sit bust it out, yeah. Sit bust it out, yeah. Bust it out. Uh, I will not be bound. Oh yeah. Break out, I break out. Sit. I break out, I break out. Yeah. I break out, I break out. Yeah, yeah. I break out, I break out. Yeah, yeah. I break out, I break out. Spirit, come on. I break out, I break out. Come on. Ha. I break out, I break out. Break out, break out, break out, I break out. Lord, we declare right now that victory is in this place. We declare that you are God, and greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. I want to declare that the greater one lives in me. That the greater one lives in you. That the greater one lives in me. That the greater one lives in you. That the greater one lives in me. That the greater one lives in you. That the greater one lives in me. That the greater one lives in. Rise up, 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 rise up,
Dust it out, yeah. Dust it out by the power of God. To bust it out. Bust it out, yeah. Bust it out. I will not be bound. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for the release, God, of the fountain. The fountain, Lord God. Lord, you are the God of breakthrough. We want to declare that right now. You are the God of breakthrough. And everything that's not like you, we're going to break through. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. Oh, we declare freedom. We declare breakthrough. We declare healing. We declare it now. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is here tonight to bring breakthrough. I'm telling you, breakthrough is here. It's here right now. It's here right now. It's here right now. It's here right now. Breakthrough. It's here right now. It's here right now. It's here right now. Oh, break through, 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 break through. It's here right now. It's here right now. Oh God. God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And therefore, we will praise you, Lord, in the morning time, in the noonday, God, and in the evening when the sun goes down. We're going to praise you anyway, anyway. 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 Bring it out, 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 bring it out. Release the flood. Release the flood, God. Release the flood tonight. 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 Break up the deep places. Release the flood tonight. Release the flood tonight. Oh, release the flood tonight. Release the flood tonight. Release the flood tonight. Release the flood tonight. We want you to come. 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 Oh, da 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 ma re de de de. Oh yeah. Oh da 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 ma 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 ya ya na ma ma na 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 ya ya ya. Oh. Oh, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you thanksgiving, Daddy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Hallelujah, glory to God. You know, I can sense that the Lord is here and he's really desiring a high praise. Let's just give it to him right now, because in that high praise, glory to God. That's where he's at, come on in that high praise. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Let's give it to him. He's worthy. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. We bless you. We celebrate your greatness. Hallelujah. We celebrate your greatness in this place. Be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Father, we just worship you right now. We give you the glory and the honor that is due your name. I feel something, something happened in here. Something is happening right now. We're in the midst of something, a transition in the spirit. Selala, glory, 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 glory. We worship you, Lord. Jesus. Shikalala Messiah. Oh, Makarabashaya. Can you sense him right now? I can sense God's presence right now. Something's happening. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is a flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus oh the blood Right.